Hi, I'm Dennis Pakabayashi. Thank you for joining me in this session today where we will look back over 2020 to date, look at the advancing of the pandemic, its impact to customer experiences, and how my teams worked to solve these challenges, starting in the grocery industry, moving through to the food and beverage industry, and how the learnings in the first half of the year came together in a set of best practices. We'll look at those best practices through the lens of a college campus, all the different touch points that are able to be managed for safety for both faculty, staff, employees, customers, kids. I think it's a really great look at how best practices come together to create safe environments for us during COVID. Following that, We'll talk a little bit about the touchless world. That's kind of exciting for folks. A lot of people have been asking me about it. So I'll touch on that. And then finally, we'll look at partners. How do you, have, how do you know if you have the right partner? What partner should you be looking for? And what are the benefits for working with the right partner? With all that said, let's get into this session. All right, so January 22nd was the first reported case of COVID in the United States. After that, the United States began to be very worried about the spread of this virus. A lot of different conversations were being had about masks or quarantines, but one thing was for certain, this was the time when social distancing became a thing. Social distancing rapidly spread through the country. Groceries were really the first to enact any sort of measures, and thankfully for us, they did. They were quick to respond by keeping stores open, trying to protect staff and customers and implementing all kinds of new customer experiences. In fact, I would venture to say that um, grocery stores basically pioneered the whole notion of social distancing as a new and relevant customer experience. First on the scene, we saw pop-up sanitation stations where people could wash their hands when they came into a grocery store or when they left. They also could wash off shopping cart handles as needed. Next up, we saw all different kinds of wayfinding uh, floor graphics to move traffic in and around the store so that people could shop in one direction while exiting the store in another. Coincidentally, this led to all kinds of new opportunities in terms of customer experiences for us to guide customers, not just safely through the store, but to the products and services that the brand felt was most applicable to their shoppers at any given time. Ultimately, the final purchase experience changed entirely. We had barriers between the employees and the customers to keep both safe. We had signage on the floor to keep those in line socially distanced, and there was signage to explain to us how this new form of wireless payment works. And finally, we had the sort of maturity in curbside drop-off, pickup, or curbside shopping. This had been in the works for quite a while, but it wasn't until COVID that retailers and grocery stores started to really take a position of dedicating space, services, and e-commerce to this sort of experience. And I believe is why a lot of our e-commerce needs escalated during the first quarter of this year. All right, so kudos to the grocery industry. Responded quickly and brought to bear customer experiences that really helped the economy more than I think we give them credit for in the beginning stages of the pandemic. But it wasn't always easy for every industry. And one of those industries is the delivery business. Now, we knew ahead of the pandemic, as early as the summer of 2019, USA Today was reporting on the, let's say, sampling of deliveries before they arrived at the home for consumers. This wasn't a very good look for everyone, and the pandemic certainly exacerbated everyone's concerns. Now that it was both a health risk as well as just sort of cringy to know that people were eating your food, 
we had to deliver new customer experiences that ensured safety of, of food upon delivery. One of the key customer experiences to really solve this problem was tamper evident um, seals or packaging. Now deliveries are customarily closed with some sort of sticker that keeps the food closed or the bag closed. This was also one of those experiences that I think we knew were a long time coming, but weren't necessarily prioritized until the pandemic. But now that the pandemic is here, people almost always demand this level of safety or action from the brand in order to signal to the consumer that the brand cares about their health and safety. And right on the heels of tamper evidence, sealed packages, and new customer experience in food delivery, we saw a whole bunch of restaurants who wanted to stay open adopt a lot of touchless technologies. These technologies enable consumers to look at a menu by their phone and pay by phone, which is quite a nice luxury in terms of the shopping experience or the dining experience but it also sort of signaled this new era of how restaurants would work. Once again, it, these were technologies that were in place for a long time, but just hadn't come into popularity until now. After tackling so many of these customer touch points for grocery, food and beverage, hospitality, a set of best practices emerged. And I'd like to walk you through <clears throat> a set of all of these best practices pulled into one execution so you can start to Think about how might you use multiple touch points to create safe environments for employees and for customers, and where are the right places and times to execute these things? So with that said, and it's timely, let's talk about back to school. The wayfinding and people moving that we learned from groceries came in incredibly handy when children went back to the colleges or to schools, helping both parents and students find their way on campus in easily socially distanced ways was crucial to the opening of many of the colleges in the United States. These same techniques transferred quite nicely into the classroom for both teachers and students alike, creating a way for students to move through the classroom as well as stay socially distanced during lessons. Best practices from the restaurant industry proved very helpful in the dining halls. Again, helping kids and faculty, employees, students, parents, all feel much safer as they dine on the campus or at the school. The handling of food and menus for restaurants proved to be extremely important for students who wanted to use their meal cards and have food delivered to their dorm rooms or to somewhere on campus, as well as when they were dining at the particular restaurants, many of which are quick service restaurants on campuses in the colleges today. Signage became important even in elevators where just the simple act of providing some clear signage really brings them a greater degree of comfort and sense of safety when in groups moving up and down between floors in a building. It also gives each person a really great place to sanitize their hands and practice safety both for themselves and others. And even the experience of public transit, placing a small sign on the back of the seat can signal social distancing cues. It can create a greater sense of safety and security in the community. So even small things like this can go an awful long way to creating better experiences for everyone involved. Suffice to say, as we look forward to sports coming back, to the people, stadium experiences matter. All of the lessons that we learned in food handling and in the hospitality and in the grocery industry are really playing out in complete integrated experiences at stadiums. And we hope that these practices provide both a path forward to get sports and fans back together, as well as many of these touch points provide hand sanitation opportunities, which just furthers the safety of the entire organization or the event. As you can see, even in a stadium setting, things like wayfinding, branded for your team to get the fans more excited and involved, or even simple things like table tents that tell you the customer how to perform wireless engagements are all simple yet elegant ways to keep the community safe and encourage people to get back together. 
And when we're talking about sports, we're really talking about gyms of all kinds on college campuses or in your local neighborhood. Gyms are facing more and more pressure to provide a safer environment, opportunities to sanitize equipment, ways to easily social distance while maintaining their regular gym times and exercise so that they can stay fit. So as the world becomes more health conscious, gyms will face more and more opportunities to connect with customers and create experiences that signal health and wellness. Whether it's in college campuses or in any public venue, having a small sticker that signals health and safety in a bathroom goes a long way to creating the great customer experiences that you want to portray during these sensitive and challenging times. And finally, the introduction of touchless. Touchless shopping is by far the best customer experience to become mature during 2020. Many, many brands are using it. It is a fantastic way to connect your physical and digital touch points. It provides a much safer experience, both from perception, but also in practice. Brands can sell things without having human contact, but it also provides a huge depth of content for those who want to access it using their phones. The process is very simple. You take your traditional printed pieces, you marry those with a small microchip that makes a connection to your phone. From that point, the options are nearly limitless and the budget savings over the long haul probably are incalculable. If you can imagine almost real-time connection to your customers, changing content, offers, coupons, engagement, live chat, any number of these new digital technology touch points that you've always wanted to get into the hands of customers at retail, they can finally happen now. If you're able to make the investments, if you're able to plan for it, maybe budget in the future, but touchless is definitely going to be by far the best way to create seamless experiences that give us the most knowledge about our customer behaviors, what they want, what they need. It will tell us which touch points matter or do not matter, help us tailor our investments to create the best scenario for employees and customers in the midst of this new way of living for our world. So touchless is where it's at. Now, having said that, talking about future technologies, I want to just talk about a little traditional execution that seems to be coming back into vogue, and that's packaging or kits, boxes. Kits and boxes are fantastic because as customers are more leery or apprehensive to go out to the stores or to locations, kits are a fantastic way for brands or companies to come to the customer where they want and where they need to be met. So let's talk a little bit about kits. These days, more than ever, people just love opening gifts. They love receiving them. Amazon has done a fantastic job at getting boxes to people in their homes, but it doesn't have to be limited to Amazon. Whether it's a brand experience kit, a subscription box, there are limitless ways that you can tailor a kit or a box to your consumers. It one signals that you are looking out for them. You understand the challenges that are in the marketplace today for getting out and going to a brand. So simply going to your customer is a fantastic way to build customer lifetime value and bring a little surprise and delight into a person's life that may not be feeling so great at the moment. Our teams have developed all kinds of boxes and they are very successful. So if you're looking for maybe a traditional way, something that used to be in your playbook that you can call upon now to be very effective during this time, a kit or a box is a fantastic way to do that. And finally, how do you know you have the right partner? Well, there's a couple of things you want to look for in a partner. The best advice I can give you when selecting a partner or when you look at your partners for 2021 is to think about consolidation. While in prior years, 2019, it was favorable to have multiple partners, maybe you had specialists in one discipline or another, maybe they competed on price, but the cost to you was much more overhead, administrative workflow costs, not to mention the cost of not having continuity in your data. In 2021, what you want to look for is a partner that can put as many of the customer experience 
executions, tactics, strategies, and data logistics under one roof. The reason for this is that as customers are a little more apprehensive to buy, people are staying home, retail is down, we're seeing a need for efficiency in budget. So it just does not pay to overspend by managing a lot of different partners. Not to mention a sad truth is that there's been some reduction in headcount in marketing teams. So if you're tackling a reduction in headcount, smaller budgets, consolidation in 2021 with a single partner who can help you strategically from a creative content production standpoint, mechanical implementation across multiple kinds of touch points, whether it's marketing automation or traditional point and sale in-store tactics, direct mail. You want a partner that can do as many of these things under one roof as possible. It will reduce your administrative costs. It'll increase your workflow efficiencies. It'll give you the opportunities and the agility to respond in 2021. As COVID becomes less of an issue, hopefully, customer behavior is going to fluctuate rapidly. So you'll find yourself wanting to shift all of the investments that you put towards e-commerce this year back into retail or back into other sorts of customer touch points. This is why it's crucial to have a single partner or a very few number of partners who can consolidate your work efforts, manage your workflows, and consolidate your data. The data that you have will be the driving lever or the driving view that gives you the business intelligence to make the decisions to adapt to the marketplace, which I assure you will be rapidly changing in 2021. Hey, okay, well, that wraps up today's session. Thank you so much for your time. Feel free to get in touch with me if you need any help exploring some of these customer experience solutions. My name is Dennis Wakabayashi and have a great and wonderful week. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,